Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Random Pets Laboratory Challenge! Where the seasons are shifting, my friends, and I am beginning to feel the crisp, cool touch of autumn floating in through my window. Which means my mind has become filled with some of the animals that I associate with the changing of the seasons into autumn. Foxes! Beautiful, beautiful foxes! Which we actually happen to have around my new neighborhood. So ever since we moved to North Carolina, we have been surrounded by a wide range of wildlife, just like the ones I remember from when we used to live here, and that includes foxes. So even though we happen to live in a pretty big city, this is a city that's really great about having greenways, and so Chips and I were actually out on a walk the other day and we were enjoying ourselves, enjoying the nice, beautiful autumn weather, or at least what feels like it's starting to be autumn. Basically, it means that North Carolina is no longer as humid as the inside of a tea kettle, and I can actually go outside without, like, immediately dying of the sun. <laughs> But it feels like autumn from the relief from the heat. And we went on a beautiful walk. We looked at how the leaves were changing. And we walked past a man who told us that he had just seen a fox. And it was a fox chasing a hare. And hopefully the hare or the small bunny got away. Or, you know, I mean, it depends on the side you're going to root for. Let's, let's be honest here. We're pixel biologists. We can handle the food chain. But it was chasing a hare, and that gave me an idea. We should try mixing a fox and a hare today here in the laboratory, my friends, to celebrate the arrival of autumn. And it was very exciting to see a fox, but a good reminder on why you should keep your cats indoors or in catios and keep an eye on your dogs. And definitely don't let your hares just like go running wild in your yard. Uh, we have an idea of how that might end, my friends. <laughs> but all right, so today, we have Darkfire the Fox after Darkfire! And thank you so much for leaving some fun comments on our previous videos. I'm very glad to know that you like foxes, and I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I think the random generator has picked you before. And if that's the case, you are one lucky heckin' duck. So, well, in this case, a lucky fox. Uh, so congratulations on that if that's the case. If not, don't mind me. But we have Darkfire the Fox, who is quite the curious young young lady roaming about in her urban forest. Foxes are indeed urbanized animals, which means that they can very quickly adapt to a environment known as urban, which basically means a city-ish environment. So uh, where we have come in and we have taken out a lot of the native landscape and put up our houses, our streets, our roads, our homes, our businesses, we need some of those things in order to function as a civilization, so it's finding that balance that we'll need to do in the future. But for some animals, even though we have changed the landscape, they are able to adapt. And foxes are an excellent example of that. With their diet able to basically eat anything that we can throw at it, uh, if it's meat-based, they are able to root through our trash, they're able to uh, eat our dog and cat food. Uh, in some cases, again, keep your dogs and cats inside. We know where that could go. But they are really good hunters and they can adapt to a pretty crowded city environment. So they are really good at being possibly, no matter where you live, in your own backyard. And I imagine that Darkfire here is roaming through her own home, which is quite the city landscape. And next to part of her territory is actually a testing facility. Perhaps it is one of the Random Pets laboratories hidden throughout the world. But there is an escapee from that testing facility that Darkfire is going to bump into today. And that, my friends, is Test Hair 445, who is a descendant of Test Hair 327, I think or something like that, who we actually had breed with our wolves. So if you guys remember, we had our wolf Usagi, which means rabbit in Japanese, end up breeding with a hare in the past, and the results were absolutely ear-tastic. Oh my gosh, it was adorable. We had the cutest big-eared small wolves ever, and I'm very curious to see what happens if we kind of uh, smush these genes together today. I also may roll the dice to see whose tail they inherit, because that's an adorable little tail. 
but Chest Hair 445 is quite adventurous. He's got a lot of energy. He's got quite a bit of a jumpiness to him. You might think this makes him nervous, but no, my friends. It means that he has modified limbs in order to jump right over the fence that he was contained by, and he is off exploring. I imagine he's a little bit bigger than your average hare, and he's you know, he's got a lot of energy, he's got a lot of pizzazz, and when Darkfire, slinking through the shadows, bumps into him, she can't help but be completely enamored by that. And for his part, he is completely enamored by her glorious fur, those gorgeous eyes. In many ways, it is a love at first sight, and as they roam through the city streets together, searching out snacks and dumpsters and finding all sorts of gardens that Test Hair 445 can raid, they decide they will be together forever, and they shall start their family. So there we go, the adorable little backstory for them, and we're gonna go ahead and see what their litter is going to look like. So, okay, okay. I really want big-eared foxes. I really want big-eared foxes. I'm gonna be honest, I really want big-eared foxes. So let's do this. All right, who knows what kind of little warren these two have dug up, probably in somebody's backyard garden, and what kind of babies they're gonna have? Let us begin! Oh! <laughs> okay, that's nothing like the baby I was expecting, but may I introduce you guys to Red Girl, ironically. When the name pulled up on this generator, I was like, perfect, that will probably be a little red fox. But Red Girl, you are actually a melanistic little fox hair baby. A fair? Fair? Let's see, fox hair fair, or hair hawks a hawks or a fair huh i like i kind of like fair so you're you're a good little fox hair uh and red girl fox you're gonna have you are a glutton who i don't know if you enjoy eating from the dumpster or eating from the garden perhaps both who is energetic and active like your father and loyal I have no idea where that came from, but it's there. Possibly the fox side of the family. But you're actually a melanistic. So there you go, little little red girl. Sorry that you're not actually red, but I think that you're going to be a fun addition to the family tree. All right, let me pull up another name. And you guys know the drill by now. If you would like to become a who knows what in our laboratory, all you need to do is leave your name down in the comments section below. Give me those suggestions on what kind of autumn animals we can mix and match for the coming seasons. And then you could end up right here being one of our animals, which I think is really fun because you honestly have no idea what's going to turn out like this baby. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's actually so cute. Oh, look, it even had the little tail. Okay, it was trying to have the white colored tail. So we may actually make that tail completely white, just like Test Hair 445. Oh my gosh, adorable. And this one right over here is Fluffy Fox. Are you kidding me? Lover Fluffy Fox is the name uh, that the, the random generator just pulled up. So welcome Fluffy Fox, I can't believe that. The odds that we get with these names sometimes are so ridiculous. I think you guys should go look for four leaf clovers all the time. But this one's so cute. I think we're gonna go ahead and come on in. And I'm actually going to paint the tail white really quickly because I think that this is a good indicator. Uh, can you hold the, hold, okay, hold, hold, hold that tail. Okay, hold the tail still. Thank you. Because, just because there was no not enough room. There you go, little one. Now you have a tail just like your dad. Except it's long like your mom's. That's adorable. Oh, I can't wait to see what Fluffy Fox grows up into. That's gonna be so fun. What a name too, like of, what, of all the irony. Lover Fluffy Fox. And then here you are. <laughs> it's just adorable. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and randomize again. Next baby. Oh, so cute! I was still kind of shocked we're not getting more like fox colorization. But welcome to little Shan! So thank you, Afshan Khan, for your your wonderful comment. I'm so glad you find our mixes and matches so freaking cute. I do too. And you are going to be a vocal couch potato who is smart, which sounds adorable. Maybe you'll like sneak your way into somebody's household. Uh, and then like become their little couch potato pet. All right, the next baby. Will we end up with one that has fox patterning? Let's see. 
<gasps> we did! We ended up in some, one with, with one that's a little black fox pattern. <gasps> you guys! Oh, I hope you have the big ears. We're gonna have to see. But this little one is actually Gray Wolf from Gray Wolf Plaz. So Gray Wolf Plaz, thank you very much for your sweet comment. I'm glad you love our videos and our adventures. And congratulations on being a fox. Not a wolf, but a lot closer to a wolf than many of the things that we experiment with around these parts. So I call that a win. All right, let's randomize your traits. You are going to be a smart, aggressive, independent gray wolf fox, perhaps trying to live up to your name, if not your genes. All right, now we're feeling it. Okay, so next up we have, dun 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 dun. <gasps> oh, huh, you guys, welcome to Hamilton. So I have no idea, maybe from their father, where this, this coloration actually uh, showed up, but welcome to Hamilton from just a wandering Hamilton fan who says the pups would be so tiny, fluffy, and cute. And I love the emoji face that you use there, just a wandering Hamilton fan. I apologize for the sake of the randomness that you did not end up with a fluffy puppy, but we'll have to go ahead and see what you end up becoming. Uh, ironically, it says that you're hairy, so maybe we just can't see the hair very well smart and active. So that sounds like a lot of fun. All right, is this the last one? I think it is. Let me pick the last name. And then dun 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 dun. <gasps> Another fluffy one who looks just like their dad. Well, here we have it, friends. I think we only ended up with one who actually had the fox colorization, but we might be pleasantly surprised when we age them all up. And this is actually little Leafy Chew. Leafy Chew LOL. <laughs> And at Leafy Chew LOL, I, I, I don't know if you can actually have wolves and foxes have babies, even though they, I don't know if they're both that directly related in the canine family, but that is a good point. There are many hybrid breeds and crossovers amongst many species that do happen in real life, but I can promise you a fox and a hare is not going to be one of them. All right, let's see what your personality is. You are also aggressive and independent and smart. I think we've got a little bit of the fox DNA dancing around in your head. But all right, guys. So the real question is, will they have their dad's ears? And will they have their dad's bunny haunches and uh, possibly his tail? I think, is his tail modded? His tail is modded. So I will roll for bunny haunches and modded tail on everybody who doesn't have a fox tail because I kind of want to see the fox tail. Let us begin. Red girl fox. <gasps> Wait, you're really kind of cute. Oh, look at you. Oh, you guys. She did not inherit anything from her dad. Whoops, sorry, you can probably hear me rolling the dice in the background. But look at how cute she is. She actually, like, huh. Red Girl Fox, I like you. I, I mean, I always did and I always will, but I'm just intrigued. Your face is nothing like I thought it would be, but look at your cute little body, Oh. You kind of remind me of like a, a bulldog. Huh. All right, Fluffy Fox, what do you have here? Oh, with that tail. <gasps> with that tail. Oh, we have a long, oh, his little ears crisscross. His little ears do a crisscross applesauce. Okay, that's ridiculously cute. I really love that. And for this little guy, he did actually inherit his father's haunches. So we do have some bunny haunches. And we do have some bunny whiskers, but I'm gonna leave the tail because that is just way too cute. Wait, are those the bunny ears? <gasps> those are the bunny ears! What? What are you doing without those bunny ears? You should have those bunny ears. What are you doing, you silly goose dog? There we go. This is more like it. Now I have to see if they inherit the ears. I think it's clear these are fox ears. So if they inherited their dad's, now his ears really crisscross applesauce. Okay, I am very happy now. All right, all right. We clearly, there's a huge difference between these two. We have some mysteries. Let me roll the dice. I'm ready. Sean, are you ready? Let's do this. <gasps> the bunny ears and no tail. So right over here, my friends, we do actually have the big ears and we have the haunches. And so we have a little black bunny. 
who has actually come up at, oh, and you've got the, the two colored eyes. I totally missed that until now. Who has come up as the result between a hare and a fox. I love this. All right, who's next? Our only one who actually has the fox colorization. Gray wolf, who wishes you were a wolf? Oh, so pretty. Look at this one. Oh, that little tiny tail. Oh my gosh. All right, and Grey Wolf Fox did not inherit any of the rabbit genes, but I'm really intrigued by the way it turned out. It looks quite different from a fox in some ways, like a little bit more serious, a little bit of a shorter muzzle, uh, a little bit of a shorter tail, like in width. And I, I, I am intrigued. This is going interesting places. Hamilton, you are up next. Let us see what you inherited, my friend. <gasps> you are fluffy! Hamilton is indeed fluffy and Hamilton has indeed inherited. You guys ready for this? Because I'm quite intrigued, actually. The ears, the haunches, and while we're here, the tail. All right. <laughs> so, Hamilton, you kind of look like an overfed chihuahua. I'm not going to lie. But you're adorable nonetheless, and I'm very happy to have you in our little, our little, um, oh gosh, what do you call a group of bunnies? Quick, my friends, I need the collective noun. You guys know how much I love collective nouns. But all right, finally, the last one is little Leafy Chew. Let's go ahead and grow you up. And let's see what you have inherited. All right, so Leafy Chew has actually gotten the ears, not the haunches. And did you get the tail? Well, you did get the tail, actually, because you have a short tail. So we'll give Leafy Chew the correct tail. And there we go! <laughs> okay! This, this was interesting. Kind of a stretch with the bunny already. And now that we mix that with the fox, the results... Oh my gosh, I love Fluffy Fox! I just want to scoop Fluffy Fox up into my arms and snuggle him. Alright. Oh, look at those ears. Okay, this was a lot more fun than I was expecting. It turned out a, as usual, very broad range of results, and I would say this has been a successful experiment to start Autumn off with. So you guys, if you could, do please leave a like to toss some garden treats or perhaps some meat of some kind for our foxes. I'm not sure what these guys would eat. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.